Right, here you go, guys. This is local news from here in Folkestone. Good evening to you. A fire has broken out at an army barracks in Folkestone where hundreds of asylum seekers have been living. Locals near the Napier barracks reported seeing smoke and flames and hearing sirens late this afternoon. More than 50 firefighters are at the scene along with police. It's reported the fire began when residents inside were told they would not be moved despite a COVID-19 outbreak. Pictures from outside the barracks shows flames and plumes of smoke. Inside, there are overturned tables and chairs and rubbish strewn around the kitchens. In the last hour, the Home Secretary, Pretty Patel, described the incident as appalling. Tony Green is live at the scene for us this evening. Tony, what more can you tell us? Well, Fred, the emergency services have been here all afternoon and they were called here to respond to that protest that you mentioned there from the people living in these former army barracks, Napier Barracks has been used since September as a home for up to 400 young men who are all asylum seekers. They got a letter this morning after an outbreak of COVID in the barracks saying that they may be moved around the barracks to allow for social distancing and to be put into bubbles, but they must self-isolate. That sparked that protest. That seems to have erupted into disorder and then the fire broke out and fire engines were called. Disgusting. And earlier I spoke to one of the witnesses who lives nearby, Lynn Dixon. This is what she told me. We heard shouting, so I looked out of the garden. Uh, we couldn't actually see anything at the time. Um, sort of five or ten minutes later, I looked out and we saw a, a huge plume of black smoke. Literally a big ball. Um, and then a bang, there was a couple of loud bangs, so I don't know what was in the actual fire, but somebody's actually told me that one of the migrant buildings has been burnt down, at least one anyway that we know of. Well, of course, it's never been an easy situation here since the uh, asylum seekers moved here in September. There have been protests, there have been demonstrations, there have been far-right demonstrations from people who don't want asylum seekers. Far-right! Fuck off! Counter-demonstrations. And then I was here last week where the asylum seekers themselves were demonstrating about the conditions that they were kept in. Up to 14 people in a room with beds just separated by curtains. Now, the local MP here, Damien Collins, he's been briefed at the Home Office this afternoon about the situation. We spoke to him a little earlier. Uh, there was a dispute that broke out at Napier Barracks. Um, there have been some of the asylum seekers that had tested negative for COVID have been moved off site. Uh, that caused anger amongst people that were being told they had to stay. As a consequence of that, uh, there, was a, uh, uh, there was a disorder broke out at the barracks and that led to a group of the, the residents there setting fire to one of the uh, buildings. Um, so that has caused considerable damage to that building. I don't believe that anyone has been injured, uh, but there will now have to be an emergency assessment of the site this evening and over the weekend to determine um, the security of the site, uh, to determine uh, what facilities there are still usable and to accommodate people if they need to be moved off site. Useless. Well, um, South East Coast Ambulance Service has also been here on standby all afternoon, but we understand that they haven't actually taken anybody to hospital. Obviously, there's a strong feeling here that the people who are, have been kept here don't want to remain here. And this is a problem that's going to have to be solved by the Home Secretary, Priti Patel. Tony Green, thank you very much indeed. And as Tony alluded to there, in the last hour, the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, re <coughs> released this statement saying, and I quote, The damage and destruction at Napier Barracks is not only appalling, but deeply offensive to taxpayers who are providing this accommodation while asylum claims are being processed. She goes on to say, this site has previously accommodated our brave soldiers and army personnel. It is an insult to say it is not good enough for these individuals. We will, of course, have much more on this on our late news this evening. Well, there you go, guys. On to